It's the end of CES 2016, and you know what that means. Here is our roundup for the best that we saw at the Consumer Electronics Show of 2016. Here we start off in the wearable space, and a manufacturer that we didn't necessarily think would take on Android Wear has done so at CES. Casio is now here with a sport and rugged watch, the WSD F10 Android Wear smartwatch. It's a very different take on Android Wear, as the body itself is very rugged and meets the standards that withstand shock, humidity, radiation, vibration, high and low temperatures, and even ice and water. There are two screens actually on here, as the Android Wear iteration can actually be turned off and what you get is a monochrome display that can last for up to one month. That is great to have and will bolster the one day of battery life that you can get when using Android Wear exclusively. It's not necessarily all about style with this watch, though we do think that for a rugged watch, we think it looks pretty cool. But this is all about substance and delivering the best bits of a smartwatch and a regular watch in one device. And the ability to switch between the two is something that we are really happy to see. And Casio has done a good job of giving us one of the first examples of of what this can look like. From wearables, we move into virtual reality, and HTC is continuing to refine their VR headset in their partnership with Valve, and now have created a better version of the Vive called the Vive Pre. Now, this was shown at Showstoppers this year with an HP NV Phoenix PC, which is great to see because now we have a consumer computer that has been made specifically for this VR platform. It's more streamlined and even smaller in its form factor, and there's even a front-facing camera that will help the user keep from running into any obstacles while being immersed inside of its world. The demo is still incredible, even though it's one that we've seen before, but our own Lon Wen was able to put on the HTC Vive Pre and experience it for the first time. And as you can see here, he was very happy with what he saw. Very large tablets have been a thing this past year, and at CES 2016, Alcatel brought out their version of a form factor that is generally used, quote unquote, in the kitchen. A 17.3 inch screen makes the Alcatel One Touch XS a very large companion to have when cooking in the kitchen, but can be used in a number of different other use cases. And that is because its sleek design language allows it to be easily transportable around the home, given a kickstand and a carrying handle that are integrated into the body. That means that you'll be able to use a large screen for multimedia, for web browsing, and general Android usage, but a replacement home launcher is able to segment the screen into one half a web page and then the other half a couple of areas where you can get even more functionality and multitasking for media and even more. A huge 10,000 mAh battery keeps it lasting long when not plugged in, and the inclusion of dual back JBL speakers and USB ports are even better additional features for this very large tablet. The small little stick, or rather dongle, provides a lot of functionality. On the one end, you connect it to your computer, and on the other end, you connect your existing Android smartphone, running Android 5.0 and above. Any computer then with the software installed will make the Lenovo Link provide your phone as a window or full screen application on the computer. This particular functionality makes it so that the screen of your phone could actually be controlled by the mouse and keyboard of your computer so you can perform a lot of functions using that rather than even having to use your phone. Or if you just want to have your phone propped up on the side, it can provide a second screen so that you can move right over and control the phone without ever having to take your hands off of your mouse and keyboard. We just think this product is really damn cool and it provides a seamless and often very fast solution compared to others that are already available in the market, whether it be through wireless or through software. And Lenovo has been able to keep the Lenovo Link pretty easy to access. You just have to put two pieces of software, one on the phone and one on the computer, and you're good to go. If you're the type of person that needs to multitask without ever having to pick up your phone and focus on the computer that's right in front of you, the Lenovo Link can provide you a number of functions that make the Android smartphone bridge itself to the computer you're already sitting in front of. Now we can move into the smartphone arena with the Honor 5X. It's another great phone for the Honor line that we have already enjoyed a couple iterations of in the past year. But this time the 5X brings affordable flagship specifications that would otherwise be found in a $300 or more phone and brings the price down to just $199. It has a vastly improved software experience with a lot of tweaks that have been ironed out and provides a great all around experience. And even then, because of Huawei's pedigree, we have an excellent fingerprint reader on the back still. The premium build makes it feel like it's not even just $199, but for that price, you're still getting a great experience all around that many users should be able to enjoy.
Up next is a phone that can actually yell first in this particular regard and is made by a company you may not have even heard of. LETV brings its Laymax Pro to the forefront and you should be paying attention because it is the world's first Snapdragon 820 equipped smartphone. There's a very large display up front at 6.33 inches, uh, but despite that, the all metal build and the small bezels make it pretty easy to yield in one hand. It also has a fingerprint reader found on the back and it did work pretty well for us. And despite the time that we were able to have with it, we did think that the Snapdragon 820 was able to speed along pretty well. That said, we did put a benchmark onto here using N22 benchmark and it scored incredibly high, which makes us really excited to finally get this phone in our hands. As far as content goes, LETV is focusing on their pedigree of video streaming content. Dive just a little bit deeper into the operating system on here, you're going to get straight into live streaming content content that should look great on this Quad HD display and run very nicely given the Snapdragon 820. It's the first phone of its kind and we are looking forward to getting this particular phone so we can see what the Snapdragon 820 can do for all of the other flagships that will be coming later this year. And to finally round out our best of CES 2016, we do give our final award to the Huawei Mate 8. Huawei is back again, and at CES, they provided everybody that was there at their press conference with a copy of the Mate 8, so we could really spend some time with it. The premium hardware is already felt and is something that we loved since the Mate 7 and the Nexus 6P, of course, but underneath the surface, we have the most powerful Huawei Mate Kirin 950 available now. And in our testing thus far, while some of us have been using the Mate 8 as our daily drivers ever since we got it at the show, we haven't been able to really make it slow down all that much. The speed is undeniable on here, and with the Emotion UI at the forefront, you'll have a different take on Android that is still highly functional and has a lot of features. It is a somewhat larger phone than many might be used to, but the small bezels keep it from being way too unwieldy and the premium build makes it feel pretty secure in the hand. That said, it does provide really great colors and good contrast, and for media, it is already pretty fun for us. And of course, because this is Huawei, you can expect a best-in-class fingerprint reader on the back that has been a joy to use in previous iterations and continues to be so. And finally, power is a great part of the Mate 8 as a 4,000 mAh battery includes rapid charging, and Huawei claims that one and a half days of heavy usage is possible on here with two and a half days available for the average user. And that rapid charging will be able to get the Mate 8 up to one day's worth of usage with just half an hour of a charge. And with that, we have all of the best that we did see here at CES 2016, and we hope that you enjoyed all of our coverage of these great devices. We hope that you are looking forward to our full reviews of everything that we listed in this particular video and article on AndroidAuthority.com. The best of CES 2016 gets us excited for the rest of what this year might have to offer. And if this show is any indication, there's a lot to be excited for. Keep it tuned to Android Authority for all of the best coverage of CES and beyond. Remember to look back at everything that we reported on here here at the show, and then stay tuned for even more, because we are your source for all things Android.